So we continue with our discussion. Vidumesh Paya, you all have been looking at this. So till now, these two feelings, trust and respect, which are, to begin with, this trust is the foundation value. And this trust is this assurance in me that the other naturally accepts to make me happy. The other wants to make me happy. And with this trust ensured in relationship, I am able to make the right evaluation of myself as well as the other. And this right evaluation is respect. So are you able to see that this trust and respect, they are at the base of any relationship? Can you make that out for yourself? Yes or no? Let us get some responses from you all. What do you think? Ji. So we are getting so many responses and all are saying that in each and every relationship we have, this trust and respect, this right evaluation of our competence as well as the competence of the other. Very nice. If we are able to see this for ourselves. Now, I'm accepting the other as my relative. And this acceptance in me for the other as my relative, that feeling in me is affection. So we can just take a little example, we all know. So the moment this new member comes to the family, new baby comes to the family, and we can see that the parents, they are already having this trust, right? They have this feeling of trust that the baby that is coming to the family is to ensure happiness, to make the other happy, right? And thus they have this trust ensured and they are able to mutually evaluate their own competence as parents, as well as the competence of the new individual, the new infant. And they are accepting the new member of the family with this whole feeling of affection, which comes to them naturally, right? Each one of us can see in our own families, we accept this new infant with this whole feeling of trust and respect, right? Where we can see that now this infant to begin with needs to be taught everything, right? Now let's see, are we having that same feeling of affection when our family grows, when our children get married? Right? And again, that's another time when a new family member is coming and joining the family. This is for us to explore that are we ensuring this trust and respect every moment. Once this trust and respect is ensured in relationship, this affection comes to us naturally. And with this feeling of affection, I have this responsibility and commitment for the fulfillment in relationship. Whenever we see some kind of an opposition, some kind of a jealousy, that is an indication of an affection. So when we are interacting with our students during the induction program, right, we can give some example from what they are able to connect. So for example, we can just ask them that how many siblings you are. So suppose the elder one right now is now in the college. So we can ask them to share their own experiences when their younger siblings were there in the family, they, they came to the family. What was their initial experience? What was their initial sharing? So that they can see that once they feel themselves connected to this younger brother or sister. We have seen this thing in young children. So to begin with, when this family 
welcomes the new child the elder one who is 4 5 year old initially the elder one is not able to ensure that feeling of trust that this new baby is to make me happy and so to begin with maybe the child may have some kind of an opposition some kind of this feeling of jealousy which is an indicator of this absence of affection but once with few interactions this young elder one is able to see that this new baby is now making me happy right wants to make me happy that assurance is there that new evaluation right evaluation of mutual competence is there now that little baby becomes darling of the elder one i hope you all have seen that in your own families what do you say regarding this what do you say regarding this g so we are getting some responses we all can see so the moment i am able to ensure this feeling of trust and respect in me this affection becomes an outcome of that i accept the other as my relative he may be elderly to me he may be younger to me he may be of the same age but if i have this feeling of trust and respect ensured in relationship then i am committed i am committed and i am responsible for this fulfillment in relationship right and with this let us take some responses from you while you are reflecting on this little question that is coming to you so this poll is there in front of you are you able to see this that this opposition this jealousy all that is not a feeling in itself but an absence of the feeling of affection while you are answering this let me hear from abdul rahman ji would you like to interact regarding this any of our participants who would like to interact okay swati ji any experience you would like to share swati bola sa ji uh, yes ma'am am i audible yes yes please namaste ma'am uh, actually uh, i i have experienced the feeling of jealousy in sibling and uh, it has not ended in the childhood it has prolonged till age of 30 plus mm -hmm. so that that be clearly depicts that the sibling is not able to have a feeling of trust a right understanding of competence in the other siblings am i right madam so swati ma'am in this if i am able to see that i have this feeling of opposition in me right yeah. let me first look at myself so if i am able to see that i have this feeling of opposition within me i need to find out right am i ensuring this feeling of trust and respect in relationship or not that is one thing if i can see that the other is lacking this feeling right there there can be a possibility that the other is lacking that feeling but now that i have this trust and respect ensured in relationship i have this feeling of affection in me it's a natural outcome yes right? so yes. once i have this feeling of of affection within me i take up that responsibility where i can see that the other is lacking in competence right as far yes. as the intention is concerned just like i want to make the other happy the other yes. also wants to make me happy but yes. the other is unable to do so that inability is the lack in competence yes Now, if i am able to see that it is this lack in competence now with this understanding in me i am ready to make the right kind of program yes. so the Madam, first step is to live yeah. unconditionally unperturbed by the behavior of the other Correct. that is the first step yes. now with 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 that the other may get assurance over a period of time it right? is again a may madam it's a may again ji ji but in Because all that the, process yeah 
there is a possibility that the other may get assurance right yes. there is a possibility and there yes. is another possibility that maybe the other is taking too long that yes. is possible but during that whole duration when i am living unconditionally unperturbed by the behavior with clarity in me am i losing my harmony no 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 i can ensure harmony within me that is there ji so so this affection is something which i can retain in myself yeah right and that brings harmony within me where yeah. i am clear about my feelings yeah again it comes to priority number 1 which is fulfilled ji yeah. and we are trying our level best to have a right feeling of a relationship yeah. that will be tried to do okay thank you thank you See, yeah very nice. thank you very nice we all can see in our relationships right so maybe some time back i was not clear with these feelings in relationship but since now i am getting clarity i can look at each of these feelings within me so when i am interacting with the other am i able to make that close observation within me that it's not about the behavior part i may be using polite words but right now the focus is not on the choice of words it is about feelings so when i am interacting feelings are communicated much faster whatever feelings are there so we are looking at these feelings now very nice i hope you have put your response so are you able to make out that this opposition this jealousy is an indicator of an absence of affection and 99% are saying that yes they are able to see that if i am lacking or if i can see someone is lacking in this feeling of affection it is because of that it is expressed in the form of jealousy jealousy in itself is not a feeling it is an indicator that this affection is missing and that's what we can see in our relationships right whether it is the relationship between spouses or siblings or parents and children right at any point of time wherever this trust and respect is ensured thoroughly affection comes to me i feel naturally related to the other i accept the other as my relative and i take up all the responsibility and commitment for fulfillment now with our students they are coming to this new setting when they are coming to this new setting they are interacting with the students who joined a year back or two year back and so on so with the students it is very important so these are some important questions which we keep asking these students during the induction program so what do you feel when some relative when some friend comes and visits you at your place do you feel happy about it do you want to share feelings with them words with them is that interaction or the interaction is in the form of bullying in the form of teasing the other where we are not concerned about what impact will it have on the new comer one who is either coming to the family as a new individual or one who is coming to the college to this new setting right we can ask the students let's ask this question to you all assuming that you are a student right now so how do you feel when someone hurts you right when someone uses some kind of a means which gives you a sense of disrespect how do you feel right what do you feel at that point of time is it really wise normal to seek enjoyment by hurting others what do you think now when we discuss this with our students are they able to see what do you think with all this discussion are the students able to relate it to their own state what do you think can we have some if any one of you would like to tell us about your own college day when you joined as a new comer right and when you were senior could you bring about any kind of change at that point of time any kind of sharing any one of you if you would like to share prerna ji anything pertinent to this part any sharing yes ma'am ji 
when i was a junior i remember my seniors treated me very well literally i um, cherish those days my seniors though they took introduction but they were very uh, what do you say uh, i was forced uh, to read newspapers and recite to them or something that but later it was like it became a uh, kind of a um, learning from them we realize it later but i thought i learned a lot during those days so i hope all are putting their responses in this poll also what is naturally acceptable to each one of us whether it is interaction or that so very nice train now ma'am and still and see. during the first few uh, in first week i felt a kind of a fear and a, um, being compelled kind of a thing but then later on i appreciated the the seniors thank you very nice so now you could all you could remember and you could connect to all of them with all that feeling of affection right in your interactions very nice yes ma'am chandrashekhar sir would like to say something uh, uh, yes madam uh, thank you for the opportunity i hope i am audible madam ji sir please hello ji sir yeah. you are audible yeah thank you uh, madam this i would like to uh, say that i had a two different uh, set of institutions where i have got an opportunity to study so when i studied my graduation uh, that time my seniors were they were no longer like chandrashekhar sir we can't hear you bhaiya could you hear chandrashekhar sir i can't get sir's voice no i think some network issue sir hello yes sir please yeah. and the other institutions where i studied was there the situation totally different they used to be a uh, question for everything they used to give us uh, uh, pass comments and uh, give uh, assignments and question for everything the way you talk the way you dress uh, the way you do it so when i became a uh, senior to them i mean to my juniors uh, then i i uh, made a comparison of what i had between these two colleges then i made up my mind that when i had in my graduation i was very happy and when in my post graduation i was very much uh, uh, some sort of a disturbance so both these scenes i faced in my uh, student career so i have made up my mind that no come what may go i will not uh, permit such things to happen and in this uh, intention in my mind i made a decision that for this i need some sort of a leadership so i become the uh, secretary for the department where i studied my mba and uh, then i could uh, conduct the uh, uh, this junior senior interaction program and it went on very well and uh, uh, people have appreciated a lot both the juniors and also seniors the way it is uh, conducted and the inclination towards it the way it was projected it was accepted by one and all very much and uh, it uh, i am i felt uh, very happy that i could uh, uh, make a difference in the uh, we are thinking in the others i mean particularly for the juniors and my uh, classmates those who are seniors so this what i would like to share with you in this platform this happened almost uh, uh, 29 years back when i did my mba in 1990 thank you madam very nice we can see that at the organization level with all this input we can make that difference in the institution level this is what we can see so i hope the response which we are getting regarding this what is naturally acceptable each one of us can clearly see that we all want to have interaction with our seniors our juniors but this ragging is something which is not naturally accepted right we when we feel related to the other that makes us happy that makes us this harmony state which we are looking at we feel related to the other right so of course a welcoming healthy interaction is a must and the students which are over here they are going to stay together for 3 4 years together and we see that even though as teachers we are giving so much input yet the input which the students are able to share amongst themselves that is also equally or at times even more valuable for them and thus that healthy interaction is not just needed to ensure the growth of the institute 
it is equally important for the growth of the individual also. So when we are able to feel that, that this healthy interaction is needed amongst all the students at the organization level also, we, we are able to give that clarity to our students where they can bring about this. So we can just think of various ways. Let us hear from, we've just now heard from Chandrasekhar sir, if anybody else would like to suggest any way in which we can have some uh, healthy interaction. Yoganand Raj sir, would you like to put up something regarding this? Any? No, it will give you something. Yes, yes ma'am. Ji yes, sir, please. Uh, regarding feeling related uh, in the workplace, mm -hmm. if I am working uh, for a particular work uh, with my colleague, and uh, uh, the colleague, uh, when the work gets completed, the colleague takes complete credit and uh, leaving uh, me behind and not uh, uh, giving the credit or any recognition. How can I take this feeling of being related into unreal? So, when we look at this, if we face any kind of an issue, is it making us happy? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, not uh, just asking. See, see, I know. I'm just asking you this simple thing. So, whenever such a kind of thing happens to us, it, does it make us happy or unhappy? If we face some kind of. If the interaction with our senior or our colleague is not going healthy, right? If somehow there is some issue, that is because there is this lack of clarity, right? Are we able to see this for ourselves? That the other is lacking in competence? Yes. Right? And now there has to be some program where the other gets clarity in relationship. Instead of going by our pre our assumptions, our preconditioning that look, seniors have to be like this, juniors have to be like this. There are a whole lot of conditioning which is going on in each one of us. I may have one set of conditioning, the other may have other set of conditioning. Right? So if I'm able to see this, that the other wants to make me happy, but based on his own conditioning, is behaving a certain way, which is not acceptable to me. Okay. Now his behavior, which is bothering me, is an outcome of what goes in his content of imagination, which is governed by sensations, preconditioning, and a very little part being governed by the natural acceptance. The other is not referring to it, because the other is not aware of it. Yes, ma'am. Now, if I can see all this, now I start living responsibly with the other. Right? So now I can make a program based on our own mutual competence so that I can work on my competence and simultaneously facilitate to work on the competence of the other, to enable the other with the right understanding without losing my own harmony. Is it fine, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. So the other may be doing things wrong, but I, if I'm able to see that it's a mistake, just like I, am doing some mistake. It may not be the same mistake. I may be doing some other mistake. But just like I am doing mistake, I don't want to do the mistake. The other is also doing a mistake. It's not the want for the other to do the mistake. So we all can think about various ways in which we can develop this feeling of affection between the two batches and the students come up with their own ideas. They are able to see 
during the induction program when we are discussing all these issues with them right once they go to the second year now all that what we have discussed with them that helps them to design their program according and that's what we see so with this we all want to excel in life right let us when we ask this to students do you want to excel in life what is the expected answer what do you think the students will say do you want to ex excel in life each one of us right whether it is our students or even if somebody asks this question we all want to excel in life right now do we need we all have this natural acceptance for this excellence so it is important for us to understand excellence right the students who are coming to us they want to get the best in the life they want to get excel in their life but do they really have clarity about what this excellence is what does this excellence means is it about being better than the other in a particular area of life or this excellence is something else what do you think about it so let's take your response regarding this and while you are putting your response to this let us hear from you so what is this excellence what do you think Dhiren sir, would you like to interact? Dhiren ji. Dhiren Nath Satoy ji or Ranganath ji, if you want to interact. Maybe Sunita ji. Sunita ji. Would you like to interact, Ranganath sir? We are not able to hear you. Your mic is unmuted, but I can't get your voice. Hello, madam. Hello. Yes, there is sir. Ah, uh, good, good morning, madam. Yes, good morning, sir. Uh, so, in response to the uh, discussion, uh, suggest some few ways to develop affection between senior and juniors. Yes, sir. So uh, I want to share uh, some of my feelings. So that is uh, when seniors are coming to our, when I was an engineering student, when seniors are coming and they are discussing, they are asking you give your introduction, they ask about their family members. Then at the same side also, uh, they give uh, which, uh, regarding the semester, which books you will follow. And they also sometimes uh, give notes and how to read how to prepare for semester examination, so uh, how to prepare in the night or how long time you read. Then for all these people, they also help. Also in medical cases, uh, how to get a medical um, quick response, help, they also advise. And at the end also, uh, they go for grand welcome ceremony. So in that way, so we have enjoyed, and that is what I felt. It is the best way uh, to develop affection between seniors and juniors. This is what I have remembered. This is this is all about to share my feelings, madam. Gee, nice, sir. Nice. Hello. With all this healthy interaction, we remember <coughs> it. Ji Ranganath, sir, please. Sir, uh, namaste, madam. Sorry, just uh, problem, technical problem. I could not respond. Uh, usually what I do in the beginning of the year after first year admission, I arrange for a friendly meeting with seniors and juniors class-wise and ask them to exchange their aspirations, exchange their uh, what favorite job and favorite uh, dish like that. And uh, I feel quite happy then I see, and I see their faces uh, glow, uh, glow on their faces and enjoying it. And I continuously observing madam no conflict, no misunderstanding or miscommunications uh, among them. They are very friendly, sharing, caring and sacrificing and uh, mutual harmony and they are uh, helping together. Togetherness I see because I mold them, the problems, the issues and their uh, result, negative, positive made them. 
that is what you i i what i do every uh, the year beginning madam and monthly once i ask them to sit together and uh, request them to express if at all any grievances mm -hmm. and they come forward to say this one that one and i used to resolve them and i asked my senior students to help the junior students madam so far my institution dragging free madam very much very much thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, thank you. So we as mentors can play a very important role. Yes, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Exactly. In facilitating that healthy interaction. It, yes, ma'am. It depends upon the interest of the students and the uh, interest of the teacher on the students and their development and their for harmony, madam. The two students, I found that students trusted the real mentors. And they recognize, they identify the teachers who are helping them, madam. That ability they have, they maintain harmony with us, madam. Very nice. So when we are able to strengthen this mentor mentee relationship, yes, madam. Any issues we are able to resolve for the students. Yes, madam. Very nice, sir. So we can see that we all want to excel. What is this excellence about? So 67% are saying that this excellence is about being better than another in a particular area of life. And 33% are saying that it is something else. So let us reflect within ourselves. What is this excellence? Okay. So is this excellence that I score the best marks? I get the best placement, so I am excellent. Is it excellent? And if that is excellence, is that making us comfortable? Let us look at the whole program to achieve this excellence. And let's see whether this program is through competition or through some kind of collaboration. So let us see whatever you think about excellence, right? Something which is naturally acceptable to each one of us. Is the program for excellence through competition or is it through collaboration? While you're responding to this, let us take your take about what is excellence. And so we have, Renuka ma'am wants to say something regarding this. Renuka ji, you have the mic. Yeah. Ji, you want to Yeah. So I was raising my hands uh, when we started about the caring part. And then, yes, it is connected to excellent, I could say. Like, and then we talk about, um, I thought of many things, but then let me just talk about that uh, regular part. Like, when I was. I entered for the first time in my engineering college, it was in Silver NIT. So I could see like uh, it was a natural trend, it was just like a tradition that we are to be read. But uh, even though we were read, but behind the scenes, uh, we also heard that like these seniors, they are just pretending to be rude or something like that so that they can know well about it. And then Naturally, it happens like after the refresher day, they were so good and it was different totally. So, um, uh, in that time, I think that like uh, the word regime should have been some other, or maybe it was uh, we, we could have coaches and interaction because not every uh, some disturbance at your end, Renukaran. We can't hear you properly. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. And so, like, um, so it depends on the person. Uh, like, if some, uh, if some seniors, uh, yes, certainly till the end of the fourth year, we tend to hate them. But some, they really teach us the value of life and how to be, how to, uh, um, say, handle our life or how to stay in the hostel or in the college, how to maintain a college life, all those things. And they are very protective also. Uh, like when we go for the class and all, 
they were the big uh, elder sister and they waited for us and many things happened so like i could find that so many negative are there but in spite of them uh, i can feel many positive things happening but uh, when when we came uh, when i become a uh, senior for some junior batches like uh, we are batches we promised that we will bend this ragging since that they like uh, we stop ragging from our time but i find like ma'am when we stop ragging like we were you know, very friendly with our juniors but at some point we feel like oh no now they are not respecting any more like we have uh, we we were respecting our seniors so i could see that but now after joining this class i can understand that uh, i was wrong because i think some point of time they will be respecting us but since they uh, act like a friends and uh, they can ask for anything without any hesitation we thought that uh, they are lacking respect so um, something like that that i just want to share very nice and you know, you could see that shift within you which is very important that at a given point of time even though you felt that they were not respecting you now with this clarity about respect you could see that i need to get more clarity within me to understand these feelings very nice sir really nice so we were looking at this whole thing that is the program for excellence coming through competition or through collaboration now when we look at the responses which you have just given it says that it has to be through collaboration 82% clearly mentioned and some 18% saying that this excellence can be achieved through competition so let's have a look at this short story ubuntu so bhaiya we can play this story for our participants so that they can have a look at this and then we'll take reflection from our participants regarding this so yeah i'll just stop sharing from my side can you just play that story okay so mati ma'am is saying that we have already seen this since it's a very short story let's hear it once again for 2 minutes day One day, a Western anthropologist went to Africa to study the social behavior of an indigenous tribe. It was a game to the children, and they willingly agreed to be part of it. Put a basket filled with fruits underneath a tree and made the children stand 100 meters away. Then announced that whoever could reach the basket first would win the whole basket and could eat all the fruits by him or herself. He lined them all up, raised his hand to give the start signal. Ready, set, go. Astonishingly, the children took each other's hands and started running together. They all reached the basket at the same time. Then they sat down in a big circle and enjoyed the fruits together, laughing and smiling the whole time. The anthropologist could not believe what he saw, and he asked them why they had waited for each other as one could have taken the whole basket all for him or herself. The children shook their heads and replied, "Ubuntu. How can one of us be happy if all the others are sad?" One of the sayings in the country is "Ubuntu." It means, "I am because we all are." It is the essence of being human. Let's always have this attitude and spread happiness wherever we go. May we all live our lives with the spirit of Ubuntu. So we all have gone through this, right? And with this, now let's look at what this excellence is, right? With all this. this excellence is to understand harmony at all the four levels of our being and to live in harmony so that we can ensure this continuity of our happiness right and let's go back to the questions which were asked to our students right we are asking these questions to our students so let me see let me ask this to you how many students can come first in your own class 
what is the answer to this? How many can come first? So we are getting answer, only one can come first. And how many can understand the concept? All, if want to, right? All of them can get clarity about the concepts, right? Now, when is the class more comfortable? When they are competing with each other or they are collaborating with each other? What do you think? So all of us are naturally responding to this as collaboration, which is something which is naturally acceptable to each one of us. So when we say excellence, this excellence is to understand harmony and live in harmony. Making effort for excellence and competing with the other are not the same thing. If I'm working for excellence, I know that I can understand harmony and live in harmony. And I can help the other so that the other can also understand harmony and live in harmony. And thus, in excellence, one always tries to bring the other to his or her level. But when I'm competing, in that case, why would I share my notes? Because I'm competing with the other. Now, is that competition making me comfortable? Let's reflect on this. When you're competing, that whole feeling within you, is it making you comfortable? Yes or no? What do you think? At any given point of time, when you appeared for some kind of a competition, when you were competing amongst colleagues, right, at that point of time, was it making you comfortable? We all can reflect within ourselves, in our own classes, what kind of environment we are creating for our students. And within the class, the students themselves, what kind of environment they are promoting along with all that? How many students in the class can understand and how many students can come first in the class? Now in our system, are we promoting so that one can become special or we are promoting so that each one of us can proceed in this journey towards excellence? What kind of system we are creating? Let's take your reflection and hear from you, your own experience regarding this. So while you are responding to this response, maybe we have Vasanti ji, Dr. V. Vasanti, would you like to interact? Dr. Seema Patel ji, would you like to interact? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, I would just, the, the question that you just uh, uh, share, put, I would like to share something on this. Mm -hmm. uh, in college, as a, <clears throat> uh, I aspired to be a good student and I uh, my aim was as put forth by my parents that you must stop the class, you must stop the class. So that had become my aspiration. And for that, uh, uh, of course, I was working also on that. But I realized one thing that it was such a lonely journey uh, while, I mean, I, I was there in the class with all the other classmates, but somewhere or the other, the first year, of course, I topped and the second year also I topped. But I realized that it had become such a lonely journey. It, I was doing it all by myself, whereas the others, you know, would be sharing notes and they would be sitting together. And I was always perceived as, you know, the topper and it was such a... Uh, like, you know, it was like being uh, <clears throat> an outcast kind of a feeling. See, no, that, journey, Hanji, that journey I felt was very, uh, it, it, it was not a good experience at all. That's all I can say. Very, very honest and sincere sharing that if we try to be special, right, that, that being special separates us from the other, something which is not naturally acceptable. I want to be in relationship. I, I don't want to be separated out. If I'm able to see this, I ensure harmony within me by making effort for my own excellence and facilitating the other two. It's very nice. All these are sharings which we can see. This is something which is naturally acceptable to me, to the other also. I can see for the other also that this is something which is naturally acceptable. Looking at your responses. 
So since we all are over here faculty members, but this is for students. They themselves can see that all can achieve excellence. And 70% are saying that, yes, it is true. All can achieve excellence, but only one can be special. And those who are still not sure of it, they can carry on their exploration within themselves, investigate, and see what is naturally acceptable to them to continue competition or to work for excellence. Their collaboration will come naturally to each one of us. This is for us to observe. This is for our students. When we are discussing it with them, they take a note of it. They are starting their life. They are another four years, they are entering into professional life. So with all this input, we are going to help them. When we are making effort for excellence, the other is like me. I'm looking at the other with that right evaluation. We recognize our complementarity. There is this whole feeling of relationship, which is naturally acceptable to me as well as to the other. I'm ready to help the other. Okay? And on the basis of our own natural acceptance, which is definite, I am able to make the right evaluation. And I have this reference within me, which is absolute, which has a definite completion point. But when I'm engaging myself in competition, I try to put myself ahead of the others. So the others have feeling of opposition towards me and I have this whole feeling of opposition in the form that I am unique, I'm special. I should be treated differently. I, I should be given some privilege. And therefore, I am hindering my own development as well as the development of the other. I try to hinder the other. I try to accentuate the differences, try to somehow dominate. And all this is absolutely relative. Somehow I am over or under evaluating myself as well as the other. And it keeps on fluctuating. I may be in my college, I may be getting the highest score, but then I may enter into an organization where I may not be able to do so. So I'm fluctuating. Sometimes I'm in this state of ego and sometimes I'm in this state of depression. So with the student, we can just see, right? With all this discussion, the student is able to relate to himself. That this is something which I need to see for myself. Right? Let us take this reflection from you quickly. And Omesh Chandra sir is mentioning that all can achieve excellence. But again, we have to see, is it possible for us to say that one is special in terms of utility or in terms of innovation. So what Umesh sir is mentioning is that can we acknowledge one particular expertise in terms of skills? Yes, we can acknowledge that this particular individual has an expertise in this skill, but that is not excellence if we have that clarity. If we look at our own natural acceptance, what natural acceptance we have to work for excellence or to try to be special. While you are responding to this, let us hear from Pavitra Ji. Would you like to interact? Ram Kumar, sir, would you like to interact? While you are responding to this, Renu Madhvi Ji. Yes, madam. Good morning. Gee, good morning, ma'am. Madam, this here I have to have a sharing with respect to the excellence and competition. Gee, as a student, uh, as a child, I wanted to be uh, you no know, special, and I was always competing. But after becoming a parent and as a teacher, I always um, teach my uh, ward and my students not to be competitive and try to be excellent. So this, this I have realized after a long uh, gap. Very nice. Very nice sharing. Huh? Really nice. So we all can see this for ourselves. Each time, whenever I am putting myself into some competition or I am putting other into competition, am I making 
harmony within me or the other or i am unnecessarily adding on more contradiction within me that is something which we can observe so i hope all of you have put your responses and each one of us agrees more or less that it is naturally acceptable for each one of us to work for excellence right okay? some are saying that we want to continue working to be special and we we'll keep it open right the students may come up with their when they when we ask responses from the students the student is still exploring right and therefore he may say that no no i want to compete and we can leave it for the student for the so that he can see for himself that whether this excellence okay yogananand sir is saying what is the difference between excellence and being special right when we say excellence it is to understand harmony and to live in harmony at all the four levels of our being which i can do for myself the other can also do and there is no competition when each one of us work for excellence but when we are working to be special will i allow the other to follow the same thing to follow the same route or to move along with me or will i try to stop the other somehow accentuating all differences what do you think you can answer we can explore within ourselves all this right now within our own systems we can just see when we are with this whole feeling of competition we have lots and lots of adverse effects right just now uh, sir and ma'am have shared their own experiences that i was out, out isolated i was outcasted when i was the topper of the class nobody wanted to share their own notes with me right so with all this feeling of competition within we are unhappy within ourselves we are making the other also unhappy we are promoting to the struggle this war in society right we are adopting some peaceful approach to the various issues which we see are you able to see this for yourself let us take your reflection and response regarding this do you feel that the feeling of competition is giving this adverse effect to each one of us while you are responding to this ram kumar sir would like to interact uh, yes ma'am uh, the, the same feeling like what seema ma'am was oh. telling me once we went for a football match and uh, it was on the finals and the opposite team could not come for the match for some reason it was raining or something they could not come over and uh, we were declared uh, a winner without even a match and we got all the medals and the prizes and that till today until even till today it has happened some 25 26 years ago even till today i feel very bad for that medal when i see that because <laughs> this is one out of nothing <laughs> and even otherwise uh, even if it's a competition match we always feel good only when the competitor is also equally strong enough and uh, giving us a, a tough time to really win that kind of win we cherish a lot rather than uh, winning against a very simple team or, or even if it's not 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 just a team event even if it's not a football event even in a shuttle or a badminton when we play the opponent is strong enough we feel very happy at the end of the game that we are like I mean, not the feeling of winning and things like that but but the spirit of happiness is there so with the in sports also this whole spirit of sportsmanship where yeah. we cherish our game and enjoy the game of the other two equally right so yes, so at at one point of time as per the rules of the game someone might play a little bit better as compared to the other but the the moments that are cherished are those when both the teams if they are playing together they are able to play their best right so even in the sports also we look forward to sportsman spirit throughout right and this competition is something which is leaving these adverse effects where people adopt wrong policy just to ensure their own so called winning or something 
So we can just see, is that making us comfortable? Is that making us harmonious? Is that something which is naturally acceptable to each one of us? Nice. So, so many of us are saying that we also have the same opinion that the competition has adverse effect. Now, with, while interacting with our own children, are we asking them to come first or we are asking them to get clarity with the subject? This whole collaboration, cooperation comes when we feel related to the other, with all this feeling of affection ensured, right? We, with working towards excellence. So our natural acceptance is for relationship and cooperation. Are we able to see this for ourselves, for our students? What do you think? Yes or no? Jasmine ma'am is asking, what is meant by piecemeal approach? Right? So I may face some difficulty at one end and I try to resolve it just by looking at that particular point, not looking at the holistic vision. So all this collaboration and cooperation will come when we work for excellence. If we try to gain expertise in a particular skill, making ourselves unique, are we really working for excellence? Right? In our own class, if I see that one of my students has good analytical skills, Again, it's a skill, right? I need to make sure that the student ensures right understanding, right feeling within himself so that he can ensure harmony at all levels of his being. So what is our perception? What kind of perception we are promoting? We have to see. We have to ask this to the students, what kind of perception they are carrying in today's worldview? What are we assuming? Is there survival of the fittest, struggle for survival? Or there is this relationship of fulfillment in the nature? What do you think? We can take your response on this question. What is your own? view about it and while you are responding to this maybe we have abhiji ji babita parashar ji if you have the mic abhiji ji can we reach you abhiji darvin shivani ji dr babita parashar ji uh, good morning everyone Ma'am, am I your G? Uh, Ma'am, few things I wish to share here from from my personal experiences. Uh, one is about as Sir was uh, sharing uh, that when I won a medal without uh, without a match, uh, and the other is what Ma'am was sharing being alone uh, as a, as a topper or something. So there's a small instance, Ma'am. My my daughter. In their school, she is the DPS. Uh, so, school ka, uh, council select hota hai, uh, wo, uh, you know, it, it's a very rigorous process. So, uh, when she joined the school, every year she would be participating in that school um, student council uh, process, which involves uh, some extempore, some group discussions, and finally the. So, when she was in grade ten, ma'am. Uh, uh, the COVID year, the before COVID year, she she finally could make it. And in grade 10 and being a student council prefect was a very um, celebrating, you know, uh, moment for her. So when she came back, she doesn't seem to be very happy. So he asked her, what, what happened? So somebody who has been uh, the student council uh, secretary for last two years, her friend, she's like, she was crying when I got the medal. So she wasn't happy for me. So I don't know whether I was right or wrong, but I said that she wasn't happy or unhappy for you. She was just feeling bad for herself. Uh, if other than you, anyone else would have got this prefix batch, what she has been getting for last two, three years, I think she would have felt disappointed. So it has nothing to do with you. I mean, don't take it very personally. She felt bad for your achievement. 
she was feeling disappointed for her not getting it uh, so that was one uh, and then mm, the the now when the school reopened she's like mama i went and uh, said sorry to her the that day i had a bad feeling for you but my mom explained that uh, you crying or feeling bad had nothing to do with me so i'm sorry i had that um, that thought about you one thing uh, second ma'am again my daughter she she applied for some internship because we are applying for some foreign universities for her so she applied for piramal foundation so they had some shortlisting of interns and she's like if i'm not selected here uh, i will be more disappointed not for not being selected but because i was not given enough scope for being evaluated मतलब उन्होंने मुझसे पूछा ही नहीं एक्सप्लोर नहीं किया मेरे स्ट्रेंथ्स को या आई वाज नॉट गिवन एनफ चांस टू एक्सप्रेस माय सेल्फ और यू नो शेयर सो आई थिंक मैम व्हेन इट कम्स टू कोलैबोरेशन और व्हेन इट कम्स टू एक्सीलेंस इट इट डज मैटर इन रिलेशन टू व्हाट एंड एंड आई थिंक वी we through self explorations come to that stage ki it is your personal thing instead of you know in relation to to somebody else or some scenario or some situations so that is what i wanted to share thank you so nice sharing we all can see that if the student or our own children have right understanding they are able to express themselves ensure harmony when they are clear within themselves and if they are not clear as a parent if i am able to ensure that the feelings are ensured thoroughly this this relationship comes at a higher priority right in the previous incident which you just mentioned we can see that this relationship why your child was bothered why the other child was bothered because we associate that the moment the post is there this relationship is going to change but once we are able to see that a bigger post comes with a bigger responsibility where i become more responsible i am able to make that relationship more fulfilling now with that responsibility so that helps us in ensuring fulfillment in relationship from our end at least to begin with so when we look around 72% are saying that the perspective is that there is this whole struggle for survival survival of the fittest and so on this is the world view and 28% are saying that there is this whole relationship of mutual fulfillment in nature and we are keeping it open we ourselves are exploring and helping our students also to explore along with us this is just what we are putting forth in the duction program so just ask this question as a student to yourself when does our understanding grows better when we help the other understand when we try to understand in isolation or when we are opposing or misguiding the other what do you think so as a student you can just take up you are putting these questions to your own students so how are you going to respond to this so while you are responding to this let's hear from some of you how can you say right what kind of perspective do you believe that there is this whole survival of the fittest which works and is it making you competitive saroj ji wants to say something saroj ji rupali ji can we have the reflection there Uh, good morning didi and uh, all participants hello yes yes please go ahead ma'am yeah i just wanted to share something about this excellence uh, so, you know uh, it is like uh, when we are small like when i was small and all we were growing up our parents always told us that you know uh, you get educated especially being uh, you know a girl child in my family generally the girl child never got educated to that extent like they always managed home so she always insisted my mom always insisted that you get educated so that you are you know on your own feet and you become independent and uh, you know you can do it for so they never put us in competition with the others that because others are doing this you should do 
but it is something that you should do for your own excellence so that you know you are the fittest one and the same thing we generally pass on to our kids uh, but uh, the thing is our mothers used to give us more time uh, and we uh, you know give little less time to our kids than that but ma'am when we uh, see it on the uh, national level like when the wars are there and the competition is there as you rightly said that nothing good comes out of it so whenever a person competes you know there might be the person who is coming first uh, seema ma'am also shared that she was feeling lonely so definitely nothing good comes out of it when a war is there so many people are killed and ultimately it's a loss to the human being but when it is a cricket match between two uh, countries or it is an olympics you know we as normal people also feel get that competitive spirit we feel that no this person you know india only should win and all so what can you say about this man like uh, are we competitive at that time and uh, you know we don't think much about excellence at that time i mean how can we be uh, call collaborative there ki you know uh, see uh, russian people are doing so nice uh, uh, in the olympics so why my country can, they sh they should be taking something from them and they should be doing it that thought doesn't come it comes like my people should perform so so what will be your comment on this man so let's see what is naturally acceptable to us right now this mm -hmm. question is very important we will yeah. when does our understanding grow better and we see that the response that is coming from each one of us is when we help the other understand which means when we are collaborating mm -hmm. and not competing this is something which is naturally accepted yes. now whatever whatever you have put as examples right so mm -hmm. we can look at various ways in which we can strengthen our athletes our players and all that that can be of course done now but the feeling which is going on behind us when we are preparing ourselves mm -hmm. right for for a certain skill if we have that yeah. clarity that it's a skill right someone mm -hmm. can throw uh, some ball some discus to a greater mm -hmm. distance right mm -hmm. and somebody has that skill just like i can solve some mathematical problem or i can make yeah. a good program right yeah. that that's a skill yeah right and that skill needs to be guided by the values okay uh -huh. right so so values are mm -hmm. coming at a higher priority now my yeah. student or or my next generation or whether i'm talking about myself mm -hmm. right if i'm not able to ensure this harmony within me mm -hmm. will i be able to utilize my skills whatever i am good at no not to the 100% yeah definitely so we have to see within the whole nature the whole design of the nature right is that whole design of the nature in terms of survival of the fittest then how come the grasses and the tree mm. remain there throughout yeah so are yes. we able to see this that we have this little plants and we have these huge animals yeah so yes. are we able to see that the harmony in the nature is designed that way that there is this whole relationship of fulfillment in nature yes yes Or, in nature we definitely find it ma'am uh, yeah So that am I am there. I not a part of nature? Yes, I am. If if I am promoting survival of the fittest, struggle for survival, am yeah. I ensuring this relationship of fulfillment? Will I be able to live in harmony? No. Oh, yeah. I am part of nature. Yeah. Right, and yes. I am yes. I am bound by the very design of the nature. Yes. Am I able to see this? Yes, 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 ma'am. That is true. Very nice. So. Yeah. once we are able to see this we have this whole feeling of reverence that is yeah. this acceptance for excellence Ex within us yeah. okay. yes. very nice so we all can see that once we have this clarity about excellence and our own natural acceptance to work for excellence that is to understand this harmony and to live in harmony at each and every level so that we can ensure this continuity of happiness so this whole feeling for the acceptance of excellence this is reverence and this excellence is in terms of right understanding and right feeling which is different from skill with this right understanding and right feeling learning a particular skill will not be difficult for me whatever skill i have right each person will have a different kind of an expertise 
somebody may be good at making jewelry somebody may be good at doing something else but these are skills i may make a good program that's a skill as simple as this just like the other is also doing something somebody who is enabling to work with animals and ensuring that the milk reaches my table again he has a skill i may probably not be able to do so if somebody asks me to go and stand with with the cattle and do this task will i be able to do probably i have not learned it so learning skills becomes far easy when we are able to see that we all want to work for excellence and working for excellence is possible for each one of us so this is something which we can ask to our students after all this discussion whether you want to be excellent or you want to be special right whether the for the other also what is the other one thing want to be excellent or want to be special let us take one quick response from any one of you what is your take on this whether you want to be special or you want to be excellent just a single response from you regarding this from any of our participants what do you feel adel did ma'am would you like to interact quickly hi uh, yes madam yes madam uh, uh, i have to say something i yes, have yes sir yes sir please 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 abhijit sir please madam uh, i would like to uh, talk about this uh, excellence and uh, this becoming special yes. uh, and we can take example of china and in china uh, basically uh, uh at they look at uh, the people as as a whole means they do not uh, treat anybody as a special because being uh, this communist uh, country at, and what they uh, ask for is excellence and devotion for the country so uh, if we could collaborate with each other right and uh, make a Make this kind of uh, this feeling uh, in the people, particularly students, that that will help our country also. Okay. So, so uh, col collaboration always works very well very because uh, because of competition. What happens? Uh, there are uh, but natural reaction of every individual is jealousy. So, so which we have to correct. Huh. See, what you are mentioning abhijit sir is very true in the sense that yes we all want to collaborate and competition is something which is not naturally acceptable to each one of us some of us might uh, may, may disagree with the example which you have taken but in general when we look at ourselves and ask our natural acceptance we all want to work for excellence that is very much true and we we would like to work for excellence so that we can proceed ahead in our journey towards excellence and we can help the other also take that journey so yes. that is very much there ji definitely sir definitely so Ma madam can i yes yes, yes ma'am please ah. <clears throat> madam even if i am good at a, at a skill and uh, uh, considered to be best at a skill i don't like to go for a competition because competition paralyzes me see i can really Uh, give a very good comedy show, uh, one item. Uh, but if I if I am taken to a competition, there uh, I may make mistakes because so many things come in me. The anxiety: Will I be the first? Will there will there be anybody who is doing better than me? All that will be there. But if I have to just give along with others one program, then the best comes out of me. that is why uh, however good i am i don't want to be in a competition very nice ma'am this is something which we can see for ourselves that thank you ma'am competition ma is something which is making me uncomfortable if i am able to see this i understand the very design of this nature and i can see that the whole nature is with this whole feeling of relationship of mutual fulfillment with all right so when we are looking at this for team work what feelings are essential we can just explore within ourselves which feelings are essential for ensuring this understanding from the others and with all this exploration with our students we are discussing this assignment where they can look at ways in which they can develop affection amongst different batches in an institute 
right? Students of the same batch. They can also make a list of people with whom you are taking inspiration and see whether they are living in harmony or making an effort to do so. With all this feeling you have for them, just see whether it is any kind of over, under or otherwise evaluation. Just see if they are helping, right? They may make some role models. So with that role models, they need to make this evaluation, whether the role models which they have decided for themselves, have they really taken all this to ensure harmony? Do they need to work for excellence or they are just competing and we are just following them without any kind of uh, self-verification within ourselves? So some key points with all these feelings, right? something which we have to be conveying to our students is this whole meaning of affection, care, guidance, reverence, and the meaning of excellence to our students. If we are able to communicate it to our students, right? some of the doubts which we can help them understand that these are some of the common doubts, some confusions, never expect anything from others, or you'll be unhappy, minimize your expectation, right? Affection and attachment are the same or different, right? Another, another thing which they keep coming across, if the juniors are not ragged, they might start dominating over seniors. So these are some of the confusions, some of the doubts with our students, which needs to be taken care of. Now, with this, maybe we'll take the quiz right now, Bhaya, and then we'll have a short discussion for another two, three minutes. Then we will take the quiz uh, after just this. Okay. 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 So Hello, Vanchana Di, may I please speak? Yeah, Vanchana Di, you may take a couple of Jee. questions, yes. Uh, Vanchana Di, uh, this is uh, my understanding of uh, uh, excellence and survival and all that is well in place. But now coming from a student, I'm a history student, but what if this comes from a science student that all along going by uh, Darwin's uh, uh, you know, postulation of survival of the fittest and which people have been believing all along, like even in nature, that is specifically, that in nature there is a survival of the fittest. So that is to say then that Darwin's theory was all wrong? So let us look at this Darwin's theory. Right? Whenever we have some theory, if we look at the theory carefully, it is based on certain assumptions. And within the domain of those assumptions, the theory holds true. Have we really verified the Darwin's theory for human beings at all? No. We, we have to human. see, we have to see, we, we are looking at so many things and without any verification. The day one, we make this beginning and we ask this little question, is the relationship at a higher priority of physical facility for us as human beings? And we all could explore for ourselves, right? What mm -hmm. comes at a higher priority? So we took this little example that in a room, there is food for one and there are two people. One is strong, one is weak. Now looking at Darwin's theory, who is going to get the food? The stronger one. At the moment we say that one is mother who is strong and the other is weak who is child. Mm. It's a human it's going being. to be the child. If you are going around on a road, you have your lunch with you and you see someone who's dying of hunger, right? Mm -hmm. Are you, something that happens to you, right? Something which is naturally acceptable to you. Nobody is telling you, you are mm -hmm. all alone. But you make that decision that I, even though I may need my lunch, but I can manage. Mm -hmm. okay? So with this whole feeling of relationship, we have to see, are human beings really governed by the way we have the Darwin theory? Is the very design of nature like that? Don't we see grasses? Don't we see trees? Don't we see small animals? Don't we see big animals? 
but we have never asked these questions. So quickly going through these feelings, all these feelings need to be explored within us. So this gratitude is very important, especially in the student life when we are interacting with the students, right? And we see these days, the students, they are coming to us and most of the time they're fibbing. My parents didn't provide me this, they didn't do this and all that. Now, when we say gratitude, it is the feeling for those who have made effort in terms of providing me all that is necessary for my own process of development, right? Even if right now when I'm interacting with you, I can see that somehow I am able to connect to you via this technology. I'm using it. Okay? This is somebody has enabled me. I am taking a glass of milk, but that glass of milk reached by the effort of a large number of people. Right? So when I'm able to see this, that the other has this whole feeling of care, affection, trust in behavior with me, then I'm able to see that the other is helping me in developing right understanding, right feeling. The other is providing me with the necessary physical facility. And this feeling of gratitude, that is significant in the development of relationships. And this gratitude is for all the help we are receiving. So with the students, we can do this little exercise where we ask them to list down all the help that we are receiving from the family, from the friends, from the teachers, from society, from nature, where they can see how much they are getting. Right? We can do this exercise for ourselves also, and of course with the students, where they can see. Right? So this, this food which comes to me, right? somebody has made those utensils in which I'm eating, right? I'm sitting on a furniture. So the moment I start looking around and expanding myself, I can see that there is this whole system which is supporting me. So can you really count the total number of people who are directly, indirectly involved in ensuring just one meal for you? Let's take the response from you in the chat. Can you really count the total number of people who are directly, indirectly involved in ensuring just one meal for you? Can you do that? Can just money provide that if the people are not involved in this whole process? What do you think? Just by acquiring the physical facility, just by ensuring more money, can you make it available for you? Right? You may have money. What if the farmer says that, no, I don't want to grow? See, we all can see this for ourselves. So with all this discussion, now we can see that we are anyway related to this whole environment, human beings, as well as the rest of the nature. And we are dependent upon them in all ways to fulfill our basic needs, ensuring this knowledge, this right feeling, this physical facility, right? So let's see, are we able to appreciate that we, what has been done and what has not been done? Or we are mostly in the complaining mode, focused on what has not been done in our own organizations, right? These are questions which we have already taken. So for the student, we can facilitate the student so that the student can look for these feeling of gratitude, right? Are we able to ensure that there is this whole feeling of gratitude in continuity within us or it keeps on coming and going? Let's check our own stage, right? Let's take that response in the chat. So is this feeling of gratitude coming and going within us or is it there within me in continuity? What can we say about you, about this feeling? What can we say about ourselves? Gee, Renuka ma'am is honestly mentioning, it keeps coming and going, right? But every moment I see I'm getting so much, right? I have to just look around and see how much everybody is contributing. But I'm most of the times focused on what has not been done. Or else we are just expecting these feelings from the other. So if we are just focused on what has not been done, we really need to broaden our vision so as to see the entire reality, right? If this feeling of gratitude is coming and going, then I, I just need to see that I'm not able to see that the other is giving, sharing this right understanding, this feelings with me, 
in terms of physical facility also the other is contributing right i need to set my expectation right i need to work on my own understanding if the other is sharing the physical facility and the other is expecting some kind of a gratitude and continuity the other's expectation may also not be fulfilled right we have to just see that if i am expecting this feeling from the other in continuity then i need to make effort to ensure this right understanding and right feeling in me so that i can ensure this feeling of gratitude within me in continuity so with this we'll be looking at this whole feeling of being related to this so do we feel related to none one many or everyone what is naturally acceptable to us we would like to take the response right you have already responded to this question when we ask the students right they come up with their own response so if i have this feeling of being related to none which means i am in opposition to all if i am having this feeling of being related to one or many right this is affection but this love is this naturally acceptable feeling the feeling of being related to all that is love based on our preconditioning right we we might have our own assumptions where we relate this feeling of love we confuse this feeling of love to sensation getting lust getting from the other right or some kind of preconditioning students need to have more discussion on this as a mentor we should be in a position that we should be able to guide our students so that they get clarity about each and every feeling in relationship now with this discussion very important to discuss with the students is where they can see that within their own family in their own college they can see how many people with whom they are directly indirectly responsible to fulfill their own needs so that they can ensure this feeling of gratitude for themselves what is their feeling when they are interacting with these people are they able to see their contribution right when they enter the college and they see this guard standing outside are they able to make out the contribution this guard is putting the the sweeper who is taking care of the cleanliness in the classrooms are they able to see that and another important thing are they able to distinguish between what this feeling of love is and what is infatuation 